Hugh Trevor Weper, Lord Dacre of Glanton as he became, uh, was for over 40 years an historian at the University of Oxford, uh, where at the early age of 43 he was elected Regis Professor of uh, Modern History. Later in the 1980s he was head of uh, Cambridge College, Peterhouse, which he guided through a tumultuous phase of its domestic history. Um, during the Second World War, he was um, an official in British secret intelligence. He was an expert in um, uh, interpreting and decrypting intercepted wireless traffic from the German Secret Service. He was involved in the investigations after the war into the death of Hitler and in Nazi hunting, and as a result began a career uh, as a special foreign correspondent, um, travelling inveterately and, and reporting incidents for the leading Sunday newspapers in England. He was also uh, a director of the Times News, he was also a director of the Times newspaper group for many, many years um, and, and, and rather significantly during the, uh, the, the later phase when it came under the control of Rupert Murdoch. All these activities and a lot of lighter avocations are covered in his letters. Preeminently, Hugh Trevor Weber was a historian, but he wasn't a narrow specialist. Uh, he was a historian of Renaissance arts and letters, of politics and economics in the early modern period, of the development of the 18th century Enlightenment, of um, uh, the Nazi period and, and uh, all sorts of matters connected with Hitler and his gang. He investigated the last days of Hitler and the Nazi frame of mind, late imperial China at a time when it was being colonised informally by the European powers and indeed the whole cultural roots of Scottish nationalism. All of these subjects were arrayed and analysed and dissected in Hugh's inimical, elegant, perceptive prose in his essays and books, but they're also traversed over and over again in the letters that we're bringing together in this volume. Isaiah Berlin once told Hugh, you understand the nature of history better than any of your contemporaries in England and I dare say in Europe, and there is no reason for concealing this fact. And then uh, a few years later, Isaiah Berlin, talking about Hugh to a friend, uh, said, he sees himself as the scourge of absolute justice, visiting the weak and the feeble, bringing them before the bar of reason. For Trevor Roper, the world really is full of figures of light and darkness, plotting and counterplotting, crafty long term intriguers, ruthlessly crawling and creeping their way towards horrible goals, and blocked by a few Sherlock Holmeses scattered here and there, uh, who alone can stop the hateful Moriarty's. And then Isaiah Berlin added a few, my intellectual respect for him is very great, and for this is far rarer, I actually rather like him. Trevor Weber's great friendly rival, A.J.P. Taylor, once said that tears of envy started into his eyes whenever he read one of Trevor Weber's beautifully crafted essays. And more recently, the novelist John Banville, writing in the New York Review of Books, has extolled Trevor Weber as one of the greatest prose stylists in the English language, a man of prodigious learning, who took from his models Francis Bacon, John Donne, Hobbes, Sir Thomas Brown, Gibbon, and perhaps more surprisingly, Flaubert. The letters show him as a historian, as a controversialist, uh, but also uh, uh, as a, a sort of comedian, someone who uh, savoured the absurdity of the human condition, whose playful teasing irony really never faltered, always remained cool and poised, 
uh, and, and make these letters such an enchanting experience to read.